Hi, welcome to the Knits and Things podcast. My name is Heather. I'm your host. This is episode 20, 25, I think. I think. Maybe 26. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to call this episode My Birthday Party because today is Tuesday. Yes, today's Tuesday, May 6th, and it's my birthday. Yay! So I took the day off because I don't work on my birthday. <laughs> If I can help it. Some years I do. I haven't ta always taken my birthday off since I've been teaching. So I haven't always taken my birthday off. Some years I stay, especially if I have a birthday buddy in the room. Um, this year I do not have a birthday buddy. And I'm exhausted from the weekend. So <laughs> I'm exhausted from the weekend. And then we had a big observation on Monday. And it always stresses me out. So I definitely wanted to take today off. And I didn't even know about the observation when I put the day in to take the day off. But I'm very glad I did because... So I'm just going to rest and relax. I did a bunch of knitting this morning and I'm going to go see a movie and then I'm going to pick up my son and go to lacrosse practice. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, but at least I'm getting a little extra relaxation. So um, the main reason, I know I just recorded a week ago, but the main reason I wanted to record again today, even though it's only been a week, is just to kind of give a recap of the sheep and wool experience this year. Um, I figured if I did all of the sheep and wool recap on the end of a regular episode that it would be way too long. So hopefully this will be a very short, sweet episode like the other ones have been lately and that won't be too, um, taking up anybody's time too much by having a couple short episodes in a row rather than the big long episodes. So let's get right to it. So, um, oh, let me say this before I start is if you're looking for me online, I'm Heather219 wherever. Um, so on Ravelry and on Instagram, I am Heather219, no big secret or anything. Um, there's also a podcast group on Ravelry called the Knits and Things podcast group. So come on over and talk with us and share what you're knitting, um, and join in on knit alongs. There is the Viajante knit along, um, I was corrected <laughs> several times at Sheep and Wool this weekend about how to pronounce that, but dude, I'm American. And Viajante is not, I think that's the maybe the Americanized way of saying it because nobody says Viajante in English anyway. So I think it would be awkward for me to say that. So it's Viajante for me. That thing, that cool pattern from Martina Bain. So uh, we are doing that knit along and it's going to run until summer starts. So we've got, you've got plenty of time. It's miles and miles and miles and miles of stockinette. So hopefully that will give you plenty of time to knit along with us. Um, I don't even know, have I ever said that it has to be a completed object by then? Because I don't know that mine's going to be completed by then. I hope it will be, but just knit along with us, chit chat with us, you know, show us what you're doing and you can join the knit along with us. Um, I don't know if I would feel comfortable giving out a prize for somebody who had just cast on on the day before or something but come join us knit along with us and you know good efforts will be rewarded um and it's just one pattern anyway so because i'm just a lowly podcaster so let's go in i tried to make notes um yesterday at school but it's um even though i try and hide in my classroom <laughs> to eat my lunch somebody always comes in so I get distracted a lot at school. So hopefully the notes will suffice. So I'm just going to go very quickly over the things I've been knitting on because there hasn't been much progress. I don't even know if it's worth showing the jante um, because I haven't gone that far. Let's see. Oh my goodness, there's some Dallas. Oh, and I bet that's what I was intending. Well, whatever. So the jante has not gone that far. Look at that pitiful progress. <laughs> that's this. That's as much as I did this time. So it is still growing. In case you missed it last time or didn't see the last episode, this is it now, in all of its glory. And this is out of the Leading Men Fiber Arts Ghost Light, which is their lace weight base in the color Darkest Hour. And it's just about, if you look at where all the increases and everything have been made. It's just about as wide as my shoulders now. So it's, it's grown a lot, but there's a lot more that needs to be done. I'm nowhere near finished with the first ball of lace weight. And there's one more. So I also, um, at Sheep and Wool, I did see um, all of the lovely um, fingering weight ones, which I think is really more what the pattern was written for, uh, in the Miss Babs booth. 
very pretty. Um, so there's probably going to be another one of these in my future just because it's just a nice project to carry along, do kind of, you know, mindless work. You know, you have those two increases to do and that's it. And you do that, you know, you know, rhythmically throughout the pattern. So there will probably be a fingering weight one of these in my future. So that's Viajante. The other thing I wanted to show you, um, I did actually, I wore my pucker to Sheep and Wool. Um, pucker was the, is the um, top by Norgon that I did last year. And I did the edging in that corn yarn. That was horrible. Let me show you some, because I think I still have some of the scraps in here. I'll show you some of the scraps that I pulled off. So I pulled the whole sweater apart um, and put the edging back on in a different yarn. So this is what the edging was done originally in. This is was corn yarn. I want to say Southwest Trading Company. Don't quote me. But it was made out of corn fibers, and it was touted as being a wash and wear yarn. You could put it in the washer and dryer, and it would last just fine. It would be wonderful. Well, no, it's not, because watch this. No effort at all, and it just splits and breaks. And it was breaking while it was knitted on the sweater. So I had, it was um, just a casual top. Let me see if I can grab it. I'm sorry to be out of the shot again. Hold on. If the edging goes at the top, at the neckline, and at the hem in the front of the sweater, and then on the sleeves, and I took all of the edging off, which took a while, and put it back on at the neckline, and at the hem, and I finished the hem just as we were turning into sheep and wool, <laughs> so I didn't have time to put the sleeves back on, but that was fine. I will go back through and do that, but now this has been worn, and it was sweaty and dusty out there, so this is going to be washed, and that's why this was in the hamper. The, the yarn for the main body of this was done in um, Plymouth Yarns, and it was called Grass, and it's like a linen viscose rayon blend. But it's a, it's a really cute, comfortable, casual sweater. I really, really like that. I'm glad I made it. And the, the yarn for the edging was done in somebody's cotton. Was this a Barocco yarn? Cotton? I'm not sure. I think I got this at Clover Hill Yarn Shop in Baltimore years and years and years ago. And um, tried knitting it as, into something else and it didn't work. So that was what I wore. That was the pucker. And I wore that to Sheep and Wool that day because it was beautiful. I went on the Sunday and it was 68, 70 degrees perfect temperature. No humidity, which we can have sometimes already in the springtime around here. Um, no humidity. Mostly it was sunny. In the afternoon, for a little period of time, the sun went in behind a bunch of clouds and the, the wind, the breeze picked up a little bit and it was like bordering on cold, but it was beautiful. It was wonderful. It wasn't that bad. We got a little bit cold, so we went into some of the barns and it was fine. So those... I worked on. I also finished, this is why I wore this, I also, I finished folded. It has not been, well, I, I got the neckline to where I think I'll be happy with it. I have not sewn in um, underneath the arms and I haven't woven in all the ends, but I want to try it on for you and show you what I did. So this is folded. Is it Heather Zapetti that did that design? This is my folded cardigan. It's got, a de again, a little detail at the front. I look, seem to like that style. Um, and I wanted to try it on. So I decreased a ton for the back of the sweater. The back kept turning out too big, which was making the neckline way too big. And so I did a couple things um, last time. I told you that I stopped decreasing on the front and the sleeve parts of the raglan and I just decreased on the back for a long time, but it still was not enough. I was still winding up really, really big. So I, when I went back and did the back of the sweater this time, I decreased every time I picked up. So you go through and, and um, I had to go through and pick up these stitches. Everything else was still live. But when I went through to do the ribbing setup row, every time I wanted to do a knit, the knit two, the beginning of the knit two was actually knitting two together. I don't know if you can really see that, but the beginning of the knit two was a knit two together every time. Then once I got up into the ribbing a little bit more, 
it instead of a knit two purl two rib, I did a knit two purl one rib. So I decreased again after that. And I think I got it to where it would be wearable. Now, it has not been washed or blocked yet, so <laughs> who knows if that will really hold true. But I also, because of the way I did the where the way I did the um, decreasing for the or I stopped decreasing for the shoulders, I do have a little bit of extra at the front of the shoulders, and I'm hoping that it'll block right out. You know the saying, right? So see, I have a little extra here, but I'm hoping that it can just be blocked out and will do nicely. And that way, my this is a very wide cami tank, um, so I'm hoping that that way, this way, I still will not have. A ton of strap showing because I hate that look and this is it my step behind my stool and you're looking at all the horrible piles back here behind me but so this is this is my sweater and I think I kind of like it I also in the attempt to get the back going with the way it should be I also did do a little bit of a fold in the back I don't know if you can see it there's just one little fold back there you probably can't see it because it's still very puckery so, I don't know, I think it's I think it's wearable. I'm not 100% thrilled. I might like a redo of this, but I just, I'd have to definitely have my notes planned out for what to do on the neck. Because it was not quite satisfactory. So this is my, my folded as is, because I'm not putting anything back on the needles. I'm gonna sew up the armholes, tuck in the ends, block it, and hopefully get to wear it sometime along the line. Um, if not, maybe wear it like if I go to the movies or something where I need to be a little warmer because I'm always cold in the movies. So this is my, this is my folded. And that is done. And that's pretty much all I have done. No, it isn't. I did work a little bit on Zachary had his endocrinology appointment every three or four months. We have to go down and check in with endocrinologists and they check his A1C which has been at the same level for about a year. Um, hopefully will change, which they, they always assure me that it's an okay level for a child, that you don't want children to have a super low A1C because it means that they're experiencing lots of lows, and lows are not good for developing brains. Lows aren't good for you anyway, but low blood sugar is not good for a developing brain because it means that your brain has not had the food that you need, um, namely glucose from carbohydrates. <laughs> Um, and insulin helping to get the carbohydrates to your body and to your brain so it can function properly. So I know it's it's an okay number that we've been seeing, but it could be better. So hopefully, he actually wants to go off of his pump this summer. And so hopefully we can maybe see if, if that would help. Um, you know, some people have, I've heard, heard reports of, you know, the pump is very conven convenient, an insulin pump is very convenient, um, and it makes the treating so much easier but it almost makes it too easy sometimes and people can um, kind of put the diabetes out of their mind a little bit more and not treat as accurately as they would if they had to stop and draw up insulin or stop and prepare the pen syringe to give a shot. So we'll see. He wants to go on the break over the summer for the pool and everything. Um, and I'm, I'm fine with that. It's going to be a little, it's a little more work to do it that way, but like I said, if it means a better number, um, and better care of his body, I'm all for it. So, while we were there though, I did work on my Zuzu's petals. So I, and I got a lot done and everybody was stopping and asking about it. So, <clears throat> Zuzu's petals is the cowl that looks a lot like a shawl that's been draped appropriately around your neck. And I finished the first lace repeat. So there's the first lace repeat which kind of looks like little um, little leaves little you know petals from a flower or whatever and that first one is done now I've, I'm into maybe two rows into the second repeat not too much and I'm I'm wondering how this is going to be this is a, is a heavier yarn than is required for the pattern and I'm hoping it doesn't wind up too stiff so it's um but maybe with the blocking will make it lay lay flatter and uh, be a little drapier but I absolutely love the colors. It started blue, it's now in the green, and I'm just getting into the periwinkle purpley color before it will finish with the white. And hopefully I can get all of the colors in there. So 
Zuzu's petals got worked on for a little bit, and then yesterday I've been in a sock mood. So I have a whole bag, this bag, um, and actually these last three bags <laughs> have all been um, from Fat Squirrel. I love her bags. They have a lot of room inside. I wish the handle were different. I wish it had a like a strap to put over your shoulder maybe because for just for ease of carrying it around um, when I'm really going somewhere for a long time. Um, but I take these to work almost every day so that I can knit a little bit at lunchtime. So they go over my hand. I just usually put them over my hand and then grab my lunchbox. <laughs> so these are really nice. This one was hers too. This one's the little bit bigger sweater bag. And I'm waiting until she does an update. Did I miss one Friday? I think I missed one Friday. I'm waiting for an update where she does the really, really big ones that you can shove other projects in and then like prop it up on your couch and it looks like a decorator pillow. Mm. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting and waiting. All right, so I've been in a sock mood. So I have in this bag my Runs With Scissors colorway from Sock Bunny along with some red yarn. And I'm, this is gonna be a plain vanilla sock. It's gonna have red, a solid red tone heel, plain vanilla, and I'm gonna try and do an afterthought heel. So I'm gonna cast on with this for the toes. Once I'm wide enough for the toes, I'm gonna to switch to this and just knit and knit and knit and knit and knit. And then um, there's a pattern. I wanna say I'll probably follow the Laura Linneman pattern for the afterthought heel. So this is in here along with the needles that I'm gonna knit them with. These are the Knitter's Pride Carbons which I kind of, I really like, even though it's got that little hitch at the tip, they work really well. I've been using them for lots of stuff. And then I have my Desert Vista Dye Works Rainbow Stripe, and this is knitting the Mystic Spiral Sock from Josh Ricks, who is sort of a knitter on Ravelry, and this is the Every Which Way crisscrossy Stripe. So you knit for a little while, I think you probably knit till right there where the orange is straight and then you start doing a series of short rows that he shows you how to do where he guides you through and the pattern is really nicely written it's very simple you just, if you do exactly what he says and don't read into it beautiful one works out wonderfully and so now I'm doing the the leaning the first set of leaning rows so I think it's turned out really neat and I think it'll be really cool with the rainbow stripe so oh and this looks a little bit crunchy, a little bit uh, bumpy because I had started knitting this yarn on size zeros just to see um, if I liked that, if I would get a good fabric, and it was way too tight and way too small. So I, reca I cast back on, and those are a one. So it's the, <clears throat> what is it, the 2.25, and then these are the 2.5s. No, these are 2.25 as well. So it's the it's the US ones, and I think I like the ones. Uh, a double zero is too, is too tight. I'm not a tight knitter at all. Usually whatever gauge is listed, and I know there's different gauges, different designers get different gauges as their, um, you know, because they probably design for their their style of knitting, but I tend to usually just use whatever the pattern calls for. I normally wind up with gauge, so I'm not a tight knitter. I'm not a loose knitter. I just knit. All right, and so that is it. I have not done anything else. I have not done anything else on my baseball scarf because I think I'm gonna go back. <laughs> I really think I'm gonna ba go back and I'm gonna switch the gray and the blue for the away games. So I'm gonna switch the gray that's there now, which is very light with the Remix gray. And I'm gonna switch my hand spun blue for this skein of blue, which is some leftover creatively dyed yarn that I knit. Um, I knit a trilobite hat for my sister. This yarn is wonderful. It's got such a lovely, bouncy, springy, quality to it. So I hope I can figure out what base this was that she was using and find it again in somebody else because this was a really nice yarn and this dyer is, I don't believe, out there anymore. So I'm going to switch. It's going to be a little bit different. Um, and I hope I can find the missing games. The site that I've been using to keep track of the games only has back until April 28th and that this, what I've knit so far, is not up to April 28th. So I'm missing some games somewhere, but I'm sure I can, if I dig around on their website a little bit more, I'm pretty sure I can find it. Okay, so on to, I think that's all of the stuff that I've been working on, and now I want to show you all of my stuff from Cheap and Wool. And I say all of the stuff, but it's not all of the stuff. It's very, very little. Mm. Like my birthday present. Do you guys watch um, Shark Tank on Fridays? 
if I'm around on Fridays, I usually watch it. And this is a design. It's called the um, Define Bottle. And this was designed by a kid. He was, I think, 13 when he thought of this. So it's got a filter, you can see. Can you see down in, into the bottom of the, the top bottle? It's got a filter that screws in here that filters your, your fruit. So your fruit is at the bottom, not just floating randomly in the bottle so that when you tip it, because normally if you just put water, fruit in a bottle and you tip it, the fruit is gonna come up here and it's gonna block your way for drinking. But this way, this part is one, this part is one bottle and this part is a separate bottle. So you put your fruit in the bottom part, you screw the filter on, and then you put, you put the top on. As you pour the water in, the water is gonna go all the way down because it's gonna go through the filter, and then it flavors your water and you have fruit-flavored water without the hassle. I think it's a really great design, and my nephew <laughs> gave me this for my birthday today. She was my sister, but she put my nephew's name on it because she already gave me a gift. So, very cute, I like it. I'm having fun with it, even though it's the first day. All right, so Maryland Sheep and Wool. Here was the cute little artwork for this year. Very, very cute. I really like it. Very cute. Um, this year I actually did go in and look, because I went on a Sunday, so it was a little less hectic. I did go in and look at the festival merchandise, but I'm not really a wear your heart on your sleeve t-shirt type of girl. If I got it, I would probably be just running in it. <laughs> so I never get the t-shirts. Um, I was tempted by, there was a really nice like market bag type bag. So I was really tempted to get that, but I had a strict budget when I went this year, so I didn't do it. Um, but the, the artwork is very cute. There's a couple of sheep there and a couple of sheep there. Very cute. So let's talk about how the festival went. I had a plan. I wanted to spend, I have some, investments that I'm doing so I'm not trying not to spend all my money and my funds are a little more limited than they would would normally have been because I did get my taxes back just before we went but a lot of that money was already kind of parceled out and already kind of promised to different places to um to do some financial stuff that I've been working on I have a little plan in mind so I didn't have as much money as I wanted I didn't want to go qu go crazy and I did not want to charge anything that was my plan I had birthday money and I had money that I withdrew from the bank before I went, so I had cash in hand, and that's all I wanted to do. <laughs> Didn't quite work out that way, but I only went over by a little bit. So, we went in, and I wanted to go to Miss Babs first. When I go to those places, though, I get so overwhelmed. And I want to say it's because you walk in and all the colors are all over the place, but I do the same thing when I go into booths that are arranged by color, because is it Ashton Studio? Ashton Fiber Art Studio or whatever, they do, they usually organize by color and Test Designer Yarns organizes by color and I still get overwhelmed. Unless I have a specific color in mind that I'm going for, I get so overwhelmed when I go in those booths because it's, I want everything. So we went to Miss Babs first. I was way overwhelmed, but I did see her shop samples and she had the Hito Food Day there. So I got to see it in person. And I've seen a couple people that have knitted it. Um, I think the, the pattern, the design page on the pattern is beautiful. And so getting to see it in person got me thinking. And I looked around in the Miss Babs booth, but most of what was left um, when I was there, and I was there early Sunday morning, most of what was left was still the, the variegated, not really the, the solid colors. The solid colors that were there were either too bright for me because I don't wear a lot of bright, bright colors, and there was a gray there. She had her gray there. I don't remember what the colorway name is. But it was too it was too much of a, a cool bluey gray for me. And I need I need the warmer colors. So I kept that in mind and kept walking. And the next booth that I wanted to go into had Jill, Jill Draper make stuff. And I had seen Megan from Sucking at Zombies. She has knitted with this before. Um <laughs> She has knitted with this before, and I thought it was just beautiful, and I'd been very intrigued by it, so I found a sweater's quantity of her fingering weight that I would like to try the Hito Fude with. I think the Hito Fude is actually supposed to be knit in lace weight, so I'll probably have to look and, you know, make a, a swatch and do a little, a little bit of adjustment, but I found this that I would like to turn into my Hito Fude because I wanted something more solid and I wanted it to be a little neutral so I could wear it with lots of things. And so I think this is gonna be great. So this is her 
Esopus. Yes, Esopus base, which is the fingering weight, and it's the color weight is mahogany. So I got three skeins of this. One, two, three, and they look very well matched, but I will probably think about al alternating or saving for, um, I'll have to read the pattern more, saving for fronts and backs and sleeves. I don't know if that's possible. Um, but I think that is going to be great. I think it's going to be very nice. So, Jill Draper makes stuff. Wonderful. I'm very excited. And I like that it's an American-grown product. You know that it's all American wares and that she states that. So, beautiful, beautiful, wonderful. I'm really excited about this. I like it. I like it. I like it. So, that is... Sorry, I'm shaking the bed now. <laughs> that was my first purchase. And then we walked around and I went in several places. And because I had this plan, I, I resisted buying the little things here and there that I normally will do. Because we walked by Loop. And I went in and I fell in love with one colorway and I said, okay, if it's there and I still have the money left after I've gotten my last purchase and that skein, that bat is still there, then I'll do it. Um, it was one called, I think, Serenity or no, Sophisticate. Very pretty. Um, and more neutrally colors, more kind of peaches and browns and creams. Um, let me clear this before it rings again. Um, it was just, it was really nice. It was beautiful. But I knew I didn't need it, and I knew I wanted two two different sweater quantities because I had a I had yarn in mind. I wanted, I was searching for the shop that had or the booth that had Neighborhood Fiber because I wanted a sweater's quantity of her yarn for a long time. They didn't have the color that I had in mind there, but what I got was gorgeous. So I, we wandered and we did different things. I went in loop, turned stuff down. I went in into the world, turned stuff down. Although that one definitely get overwhelmed, and I'm like I can't choose. It's because it's colors that I wouldn't normally put together because her, her color sense is so unusual yet still striking that I, I had no idea what to buy so I just didn't buy anything. Um, although I would like to do a club maybe to see if I can get into one of her clubs and just kind of you know at random take what comes because I think that might be nice. So turned it down, kept going. What else did I look at? Let me see if I'm missing anything else. Do, 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 do. No, 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 no. I talked about the weather. I looked at the, and I got the yarn for Hito Fude. This is probably about where I got distracted because that's all. So I found, well, I did not see any um, dragonfly fibers when I was there. So I also, oh, there's a place called, um, there's a place called Brush Creek Woolworks. Yes. Brush Creek Woolworks that's there, and they have the most wonderful spices and teas and just kind of funky stuff. They have um, tools for knitting and spinning and weaving that you would never think of finding in that booth when you see the when you see it from just walking by. So you need to go in and see. They have lots of fiber for spinning. They don't have any yarn, but they have fiber fiber for spinning. Actually, they might have had yarn, but they definitely have fiber. They have like. Um, Turkish rugs and bags and pashminas and things for incense and they have books and it's wonderful but I go in there every time and I get curry from them and I also get tea and this year I also got another tea infuser so it's a little spoon and you reach in and you grab your loose tea, bag, tea leaves because I, we lost one somehow I probably got thrown away on accident and I got tea so they have little bags of teas and so I have Dragonwell green tea, because I love green teas. Pomegranate green tea with rose petals. Doesn't that sound indulgent? And I got jasmine flower green tea. The jasmine flower and the dragonwell I've gotten before from them, and they're wonderful. So I got three teas, and I got curries. And normally I get a hot curry and a regular curry. I know we still have hot curry left, because I only do the hot curry when my son is away. So this time I got the regular curry powder, which we always I always run out of by the time we go back in. And I got some Vindaloo curry. And so I don't know exactly what the difference is, although the direct, the ingredients are listed right there. But I thought I would try it. It's that, it smells a little it smells a little spicier. Yeah, there's extra definitely extra spices and definitely it looks like there's tomato powder in there. But a lot of things are the same. Oh, there's cinnamon, so maybe it's got like a more of a like a sweet and cloves. Maybe there's more like a sweet tinge to this. Oh, it smells really good. So 
curries and teas from Brush People Work. Wonderful. I really like them. Okay. So that was there, and I knew I was going to do that, so that didn't that didn't go out of my budget at all. And if you see me keep looking up, I you know you know when it's your birthday on Facebook and everybody posts and things flash up, so I have a little things flashing up there every once in a while. Um, da -da -da -da, what next? We went into so then I found my I found it was Uncommon Threads, I believe, that had um, Neighborhood Fiber Company yarn in their booth this year. And so I got a sweater's quantity of her Studio Sport in the, oh, what colorway is this? Easterwood is the colorway. So it's greens and blues, and it, this, it looks purple right now. It looks purple, and I tried having natural light come through. Greens and blues is what this is. It really is not purple, <laughs> but it looks like it. Oh, come on. Will it go there? No, it won't. Ugh. Right there, there it looks black and gray and purple. So I don't know if it's coming through for you or not. Probably not. But it's beautiful. It's like a deep forest green. Uh, like a deep forest blacky blue green. And the blue is maybe like a royal blue with a black overwash to it. Uh, it's really, really beautiful. So I got this with the intention of doing... Now I can't remember it. <laughs> ah! What is the one? <sighs> I had it in mind just a minute ago. I didn't even write it down because I knew I would remember. Uh, I don't remember. It's a little cute little short cardigan and it's got um, it's got more of an open front and it folds back and a good ale. <sighs> it's the good ale cardigan that I would like to knit with this and I, I really wanted something I had thought about the Good Ale cardigan when I got my little skein, my skeins of support weight that Blue is holding right there. <laughs> um, so I had thought about that when I looked at how much yardage and everything I had with the support weight skeins from Knit Picks. Um, but I really didn't want to do it in something so solid in matte. I wanted to do it in something um, hand dyed. So this will be it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Although it looks purple on there, so sorry. Does it look better if I come back this way? Does it look any better if you see it with blue? No, I still think it looks kind of purple. Maybe, I don't know. We'll put it back here and see. <laughs> there. We'll put it back there and see if maybe the colors come out now. It just looks like a blue blob. All right, so that was it for the yarn, and I was supposed to be done at that time because that lot is what my family gave me for my birthday, and the Jill Draper Make Stuff lot is what I had pulled out from my own money. Um... But then I had, you know, little things I bought, you know, of course I had a lamb sausage for lunch and I bought almonds and on the way out I got an ice cream cone. Um, so, you know, little things here and there. I also got, I also found, and I don't even know, do I know what shop this was? Do they have their name on it? Yes, Breezy Willow Farm. I found this natural sponge says it's a natural sponge hand dipped in mineral sea salt soap and it's great for gentle body exfoliation. I just thought I love natural sponges anyway and the fact that it was already dipped in soap I just thought was really neat. So this was, you know, a couple a couple dollars out of my little budget, but I still hadn't I still hadn't gone over my budget when I got this. And it smells really good. So I don't know if you can tell, but it's you know, a sponge is soft, but this is hard because it's already been dipped in the soap. And so I'll probably use this tonight after my run <laughs> because I wanted to keep it to show when I podcasted, when I recorded the next time. But I just think it's really, really neat. So I don't know if it's only going to be one use and then the soap will be gone. I'm hoping that it'll be more than that. So we'll see. I'm anxious to see how it, how it works out. And if it works nicely, I might order a couple more online um, because I definitely have a website. So interesting. And so that was... That should have been me. I had, you know, a couple dollars left, and I knew I wanted an ice cream cone on the way out because ice cream cone at the fair. Wonderful. You know, fair food. Their ice cream is just so good. The, the creamy ice cream. Oh, it's just so wonderful. So I knew I wanted to do that, and I was done. Then on the way out, we were walking to the car, and we walked up the main strip, and my friend Kelly that went with me wanted to stop and take a picture of the llamas. <laughs> so... I was waiting for her to take pictures of the llamas, 
and I was eating my ice cream cone and I happened to look up and I don't know how I missed them the first time but I happened to look up and what booth was there but gourmet stash so I went in like a dummy <laughs> so I went in and of course fell in love with because the, there were her little poonies were there so I, had, I felt like I had to get some right I had to so I got the Spinner's Hill at Maryland Sheep and Wool exclusive colorway because I just couldn't decide. I was looking at um, this colorway actually attracted me and also the Maleficent colorway attracted me. I thought both of them were really nice. So I just went ahead and went with the Maryland Sheep and Wool colorway so that I would have one of the exclusives. And so here they are, the little poonies. So this is an out one ounce of poonies. And they have gorgeous, yummy silk bits in them. And I just, I think they're going to be really fun to spin. And I, you know, I've been making my own, so I'd like to see what it's like to spin from someone else who prepares them. You know, another, another person that does this kind of for a living and see, you know, what the difference is and see if what I'm making is comparable. Although, the ones I'm making are out of, um, like, Tencel. If they're out of really slippery material, so I don't know that it would be comparable anyway. Um, so that was that was my last purchase. That and I thought I got something else. Oh, I got a little, just a little Lolo. That's what it was. Lolo did a gourmet, has done a gourmet stash um, scent. So, and I love these little things for stuffing in my purse and just keeping there. So I got that. And so that, I did those last two things, and I did have to break out the credit card for those. Oops. <laughs> so, so before I was so rudely interrupted, <laughs> I'm having storage problems. I had to go out into my settings, delete some of the podcasts that, ha that I've watched already and just hadn't deleted off of the iPad, and now I can record again, hopefully. So before I was so rudely interrupted, I was finishing up in the Gourmet Stash booth. Who, the, we should, and I don't know the, na the lady's name from Gourmet Stash. The lady who runs the place <laughs> was very helpful and gave us lots of tips for spinning and was showing my friend Kelly how to spin. Um, Kelly tends to be a little bit of a... She loves spinning. She loves creating her own yarn, but she's not as confident in her skills as I think she should be. Um, so the lady at Gourmet Stash showed us, demonstrated spinning her poonies, but also when we were at the Clover Hill Yarn Shop booth, Way showed us with some spindles that she had there, some handmade spindles that she had there, she showed us the park and draft method, which is what I would like to get my friend Kelly into. So if you know about park and draft, you kind of pull out a length of a length of yarn so you start spinning and you get a little length that has already turned into yarn and then you put tons and tons and tons of twists by spinning the spindle a little extra so you put lots and lots of twists there and then you can stop the spindle secure it where you're more comfortable with it and let that twist then travel up into the rest of the yarn and keep going until the twist runs out um, and that's what I would like to get my friend Kelly into because I, I feel like she can do it and I think then if she would try that method it would give her the confidence to be able to go ahead and spin um, in a more in a more consistent a more rapid pace I don't know quite how to how to say it because anyway you're spinning if you're making yarn you're doing it right so there's no right or wrong way but I would like her to feel a little more confident so that was there but also at gourmet stash I was uh, I was a little sad to have missed and not been able to go on Saturday and miss the podcaster meetup because I would love to be able to meet some of my favorite podcasters in person. Um, so I was sad to have missed it, but at the Gourmet Stash booth, they did have some Knit Girls souvenirs left. So even though I didn't get to run into um, Leslie and Laura in person, I did get a stylus pen. So I'll probably go ahead and put that in my purse now that I've shown it. And I did get to meet Vanessa from Vintage Rose. And she's the brilliant girl who has the stitch marker necklaces and keychains and bracelets. I just, I absolutely love them. But like I said, I was already there and I was already breaking my budget to do the poonies. So I didn't want to do any more. So the next time I am able to treat myself, I am going for a necklace from Vintage Rose. And what I'd like to do is get one necklace with kind of a starter set. And then also 
um, you know, with the intent of going back and getting different collections here and there, you know, sporadically. So I really was glad to have met her. She was very, very nice and super personable and nice and sweet. Um, so I definitely have her on my list of um, must-buy from people. So... I, you know, I missed the podcaster meetup, but I did, about 2 o'clock on Saturday, I did go and meet some of my Harry Potter friends. And so I, it was nice to be able to go and connect with them. Last term was my first term in Harry Potter, so I, I hadn't, you know, I didn't have the, the connections from, you know, extensive time online, exchanging projects with these with these knitters. But it was nice to be able to meet some people, and I actually, one of the ladies that I met, um, is it Den, Den Nitz? Den Bren. Den Bren I met from Ravelry and we're gonna we're both in the Harry Potter um, house cup we're actually we're both in Gryffindor and we're gonna work together on a project for our house to earn these you know I was ex explaining it to my friend Kelly when we were at the meetup because she's like well how do you know these people and what do you guys do and I was explaining to her and I'm like well we knit projects for imaginary points for a supposed cup that nobody actually wins. <laughs> so it was actually kind of funny once I kind of broke it down to explain it to her that really we're doing this all for imaginary points, but it's the camaraderie and it's the sense of accomplishment you get from finishing things because I feel like doing from doing the Harry Potter House Cup that you finish things a lot more and a lot quicker and a lot more often than you would if you were just knitting on your own. So with that said, that was my lovely day. So it was very nice to get to meet those people. It was very nice to be around all the sheep and wool time. Oh, and I did go into the fleece barn. I was not in the market for a fleece this year, but I just had to go in and touch some things and get that, that raw wool smell. I love it. So I did go into the, into the fleece barn um, and poke around a little bit. And I was there, you know, late in the afternoon on a Sunday. So the things that were there, I felt were the, were the fleeces that were way overpriced and were kind of out of anybody's range, <laughs> um, or the things that weren't the best fleeces to begin with. So it wasn't, it wasn't the normal experience. Normally I go on Saturday morning and I get in the fleece line first and I get a fleece, but I still have not spun the one that I got last year. So I was not in the market for a fleece. I didn't spend the one that I got last year and I still have fleece left over from, the last time I went on a Sunday, I know this is another tangent I'm going off on, but the last time I went on a Sunday, it was late in the afternoon on a Sunday, and we were walking by. My sister wanted to go into one booth, so this is a while ago, because my sister hasn't been in probably three, four years. My sister wanted to go into one booth because she was looking at baskets, and this place had baskets and some woodwork and some fleece, different types of fleece. Um, and there was a bag, of, like a chicken feed bag, full of gray Romney. It was so beautiful. And it was a ba it was like two, uh, two, maybe three pounds of fleece. And the woman looked at me and she went, eh, 25 bucks, you can have it. And I said, are you kidding me? I said, no, I'm not taking that fleece home. I'm not supposed to be taking a fleece. And she goes, come on, $20. So how could you not give the woman $20 to take home three pounds of Romney? Seriously? But it's all, and it had all been washed and everything. Not the, not perfectly washed. It's still a little lanoliny, um, not to the point where it's going to ruin the fleece or anything. So it's still a little bit lanoliny. But it's all the kind of the loose lock. So I have to kind of flick it as I go. And I did get a flicker, and I I do little bits here and there. But um, yeah, I haven't finished those two yet, <laughs> so I'm not allowed to get another fleece until I've done those. And I should be able to get you know a, several sweaters out of those or several sweater quantities out of those to knit up or trade or give away or whatever. So definitely was not in the market for a fleece today, um, Sunday, um, but I just, I had to go in. So I'm very glad that I had my little shindig. I look forward to it so much every year. I think I look forward to that more than anything even related to my birthday and or gifts or anything, being able to just be surrounded by all of that like-minded, you know, the, all those like-minded thinkers and to see all of the fleece and see all the animals and pet things and touch things and get to select some special goodies to bring home with me. So much fun. So if you don't already get to go to Maryland Sheep and Wool, I hope you do one day. You have to put it on your list. I know Rhinebeck is still on my list, but probably not until my kid's out of school <laughs> because it's right in the middle of uh, fall sports. So with that said, I think I'm done now. So I hope your knitting makes you happy. Until next time, see you then. Bye.